The Moon is our closest neighbour in space and it's about a quarter the size of our planet Earth. It is a natural satellite which means that it orbits around us. Scientists believe that the Moon was formed when a large object about the size of planet Mars collided with the Earth billions of years ago. Fragments from the Earth and the large object combined to form the Moon. Have you ever thought that the Moon looks like a giant wheel of cheese? That's because it has craters all over its surface. And these craters are the result of rocks and asteroids hitting the surface of the Moon over millions of years. Did you know that the Moon shines so bright because it is reflecting the light of the Sun? The Moon can look really different from night to night as it travels around the Earth. When the Moon is between the Earth and the Sun, we can't see the Sun's light reflecting off the surface of the Moon from Earth. And this is called a new Moon. But when the Moon is on the other side of the Earth to the Sun, we can see the entire half of the Moon that is facing us illuminated by the Sun. And this is called a full Moon. In between a new moon and a full moon, there are different phases which describe how much of the moon's surface we can see illuminated by the sun. There are eight of these phases altogether, starting with the new moon, waxing crescent, first quarter, waxing gibbous, full moon, waning gibbous, third quarter, waning crescent, and then we're back to the new moon. This cycle takes about one month to complete. Every now and then, the Earth will come between the sun and the moon at just the right angle for the Earth's shadow to block the sunlight falling on the Moon. This is called a lunar eclipse. You'll have to stay up really late to watch one, but if you do, you'll notice the Moon quickly darken, turn red, and then disappear completely. And then, just as quickly as it happened, the Moon will get bigger and then shine bright again. Humans have been fascinated with the Moon since the beginning of time and, in 1969, astronauts actually landed on the surface of the Moon. They left footprints, a flag and collected samples of the Moon's surface to study back on Earth. Since then, we've sent many rovers and satellites to explore even more. These robotic explorers have taught us so much about the Moon's geology, what it's made of, and what we could do on future missions. But the Moon isn't just for astronauts and scientists to explore, you can explore it too. Grab a telescope or head to an observatory, look up at the Moon and see what you can discover.
Now that we've explored the moon, let's go on a journey through the rest of the night sky and explore the stars and constellations. The night sky is like a huge canvas filled with sparkling stars. Stars are giant balls of gas that emit light and heat, and they come in all different sizes, colours and brightnesses. But with so many stars up in the sky, how do we make sense of them all? Well, for thousands of years, humans have been connecting the stars to form shapes and patterns called constellations. Constellations help us to navigate the night sky and they also tell us stories about mythical creatures and heroes. Orion, or the Hunter, is one of the most recognisable constellations in the night sky. And it can be seen from anywhere in the world. Go outside on a clear night and look for three bright stars close together in an almost straight line. These three stars are Orion's belt. Two brighter stars to the north are his shoulders and two more to the south represent his feet. In the Northern Hemisphere, you might have heard of the Big Dipper. It looks like a spoon or a ladle and it is part of a bigger constellation called the Ursa Major, the Great Bear. If you can find the Big Dipper, you can use it to locate the North Star, also known as Polaris. It's like a compass in the sky and has been guiding travellers for centuries. In the Southern Hemisphere, the stars and constellations look a bit different. One famous constellation is the Southern Cross, a group of stars that form a shape similar to a cross. By drawing a line connecting the two bright stars at the end of the Southern Cross, you can find the South Celestial Pole, which is also used for navigation. Amazing is the night sky. Next time you find yourself outside on a clear night, look up to the stars and see what shapes and patterns you can find. Maybe you can discover some new constellations of your very own. If you haven't already, make sure to hit the subscribe button so you never miss a video. And don't forget to follow me on Instagram at Learning with Katie for even more fun and educational content. See you in our next video.